wanted lesbian friends? They're perfect. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Let's Talk About It. I talk about my favorite TV shows and movies, so yeah, let's talk about it. So the reception from last month's video um, of the recap of Awkward has been amazing, and I'm so glad you guys are enjoying it. So I thought I'd keep in with the theme of recapping underrated gems from MTV. And another one of these would be faking it. I'm oddly flattered, but I'm not gay. I'm just gonna flip on this closet light for a sec so we can talk, okay? I'll be the first to admit, it's obviously nowhere near as good as Awkward, but I can't deny it was cute, it was fun. And to be honest, I was looking for something that would give me the same vibe as Awkward, and while it didn't quite feel the same for me, it put up a decent fight. Like the overall plot was cute, the characters were fun, and it was just nice to follow up up until its cancellation. I think one of the reasons I even gave the show a chance was because I still had a crush on um, Greg Sulkin, especially after his appearance on The Wizard of Wibbly Place. And Loki, I was looking for more. So I was like, you know what? I'll give it a chance. Why not? And our high school is so tolerant and accepting, the outcasts are the in crowd. But yeah, to go over the premise just real quickly, Faking It is another MTV American teen romance comedy show that premiered in April um, 2014 and aired up until 2016. The show revolves around two high school best friends who are mistakenly outed as lesbians and decide to go along with the misconception in order to gain popularity. It's kind of set in a school where um, being different is what's in and actually makes you popular. Here at Hester High, we do things differently. We accept everyone. Like think the complete opposite of McKinley High from Glee, because I'm also kind of watching Glee as well. And was genuinely well received both by critics and audiences, especially in the first season, but kind of lost, lost interest as the show progressed. As we established, that's kind of the norm. It was also the first show to feature an intersex main character. And it, it was actually the show that taught me um, more about what being intersex was, because I had heard about it before, but I didn't really know or understand what it was. While it was funny and progressive and had its moments, I think one of my biggest notes um, would be that even though it felt very high school, it still, I think it should have been set in university slash college. Like a lot of things they were doing and a lot of people they were dating would make more sense in a college environment. But yeah, like I said, they tried, they put up a fight. While it was fun and progressive, I don't know, I just never really took it too seriously. I say for me, it felt more like a space of guilty pleasure. Like, yeah, the storylines were engaging, the writing was witty and sharp, um, the characters were easy to fall in love with and care about, and the actors did what they needed to do. But, I don't know. They didn't quite get the line between ridiculous and serious quite right, so it always didn't... I, I couldn't take some of the shit seriously. <laughs> but all in all, it tried, you know? It tried. But yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the characters now. I've never labeled myself. I'm more attracted to the person. So let's begin first with Amy, one of the main characters. Amy is a junior and Karma's best friend. Personality wise, she's the more cynical and realistic between the pair. She's the sensitive RC type who initially struggles to accept and get comfortable with this newfound popularity. Amy is introspective, she's empathetic, and she's loyal, kind of, to her friends. Um, throughout the series, we follow her as she struggles with her identity and sexuality, trying to understand her feelings for Karma and other girls, as well as her lingering attraction to men. The themes in Amy's journey revolves around self-discovery, acceptance, and learning to embrace her true self. Sexually confused girl who wants to go to college. She also comes from a more conservative traditional family and deals with issues with her former beauty queen mother, who struggles to accept her sexuality. I can have an s &M dungeon in our garage, but I can't fall in love with my best friend because she's female. If you could be with a boy, why wouldn't you? It'd be so much easier. She's all right to watch. She's, yeah, she's, she's all right. And um, we just watch her make the same mistakes over and over again when it comes to Carmen. Like she just puts herself in this loop and yeah, bless her heart. It's just a loop that runs straight through my heart over and over and over again. There I go again. What? Making it all about me. See? Worst best friend ever. Then there's Karma, who is Amy's other half. She is the more optimistic, ambitious, outgoing of the pair. She's the typical archetype of the female male character in a teen coming of age series. You know, she's boy obsessed and she craves popularity. Throughout the series, she has an on-again, off-again thing with another popular student called Liam Booker. 
while also trying to navigate Amy's feelings for her and not wanting to lose her best friend. Usually, I don't like a character like her, but surprisingly, I didn't mind her too tough. On the other hand, she was a drunk girl at a party, and kissing you for attention is kind of what she's known for. Because she's charismatic and driven, she can sometimes be manipulative in a pursuit to get what she wants. But despite her flaws, she deeply cares a lot about her friends. The themes in Amy's journey revolves around growth and development as she learns the importance of honesty, authenticity, and genuine connections. Like, she, we watch as she learns to accept herself as is instead of trying to be someone else in order to be accepted. Um, it's a pretty relatable journey. I also like her family dynamic as her parents are the hippie dippy smoke weed really supportive liberal um type you two trailblazers have fun loving each other okay. very much the parents in easy a coded right next to a tp where said parents have loud sex every night venus was ascending it's not your fault they broke up trust me i'm a booker remember then there is liam booker liam is shane's straight best friend typical man Determined to prove your virility by turning a lesbian straight. He's the brooding, mysterious, sexy artist type. At first, his attraction to karma is due to her being a lesbian, but he slowly develops genuine feelings for her and wants to be better for her, shredding his layer up reputation. Okay, well, you're Liam Booker, Hester's own Hugh Hefner. Karma changed all of that. His arc revolves around um, working through his complicated family issues and learning to open up and lean on others emotionally with themes of redemption and searching for identity and belonging. Um, basically his family issues is that because he grew up in a rich family with like the family owning this universe's version of Google called Squirkle. Just squirkling random things. I know you fucking lying bitch! <laughs> <laughs> they are really secretive, um, controlling, and image obsessed. They don't support him being an artist, and it actually turns out that he's adopted. Despite being one of the best looking characters on the show, he unfortunately is one of the most boring ones. I barely found um, any clips to insert here. He suffers from pretty boy syndrome, I fear. He's just an average rich guy who's nice to look at, who always tries to do the right thing. You used your witchy ways and made my two favorite people fall for you. I have no clue how you did it. Nope, still don't get it. Then there's Shane, who is also kind of um, Liam's other half. He's the most popular guy in school who is also openly gay. He kind of kicks off the plot as he's the one who wrongly assumes Amy and Karma are lesbians. He is confident, straightforward, witty, and kind of mean having a reputation of outing people, which is ironic. Raise your hand if you've been outed by Shane Harvey. He's also unapologetically himself, and for most of the series serves as Amy's confidant as she navigates her feelings and being the voice of reason and kind of like her gay guru, as well as providing comedic relief. You're gay, big whoop. Does it look like I need a makeover? Shane's character also challenges and presents um, stereotypical representation of the white gay. All in all, I don't know, I kind of fuck with him. I think this is because he has such a cute baby face, so when he's being mean, I can't take it seriously. He looks adorable, like, come on. Look at this face. So I'm guessing from your outfit in that clipboard, you're the HBIC around here. What exactly does that mean? <laughs> Head bitch in charge. Did you just call me a bitch? And then lastly, we have Lauren, who is Amy's new stepsister. And as she's a conservative, initially she has struggled to adapt to this very new liberal environment, noting that her being the bitchy, fairly rich, petite, white blonde would make her popular at any other normal high school. Any other school in Texas and you wouldn't dare talk to me like that. As someone who comes from a place of privilege, she's used to gain her way and what she wants. And over time, she grows to accept and even love her new school and her new environment, especially with how accepting they are of her being intersex, which is something she's previously hidden and felt ashamed of. With the new marriage though, she quickly bonds with Amy's mother as they both enjoy the same things and have similar um, beliefs and views and she relates more to her than anyone in school. Personality wise, she's ambitious, she's driven and she's very competitive, always willing to go the extra length to get what she wants. This is against nature. I'm gonna set things straight, pun intended. To those who don't know her or aren't close to her, she presents as being cold and calculating, but as the series progresses and we learn more about her and she bonds with these people, we see her develop a more vulnerable, caring side to her. And similar to the rest of the cast, honestly, her journey revolves around themes of 
self-acceptance, identity, learning to be more empathetic and understanding towards others. Though they didn't get along at first, over the series, her and Amy as stepsisters develop a, a little bond with like mutual respect and understanding of each other. I'm guessing you plan on extorting me. Will you just shut the f up? I'm trying to empathize. I didn't realize it before, but like this show is so white. And it's interesting for sure that like clearly cares about representation and diversity and all that. Like where's our token PLC? I had to put on sunglasses during some scenes, like it's blinding. I just think it's interesting or very in the time, you know, of 2014, 2016 of having like your core cast as being so white and then dotting the minorities and the difference around as supporting characters. Because they do do that fairly, like they, I, I will give them that they do have like diverse supporting cast, but the main cast is so white, goodness gracious. But yeah, with now all the main characters covered, let's now dive into the recap of each season. I already have a girlfriend. If these people find out you're faking, they will lynch you and not even notice the irony. So season one begins with an introduction to our main characters and the status quo at their high school. We learn that over the years, Karma has tried several things to increase her popularity at school, but to no avail. That's until one day, one of the popular kids, a gay guy called Shane as we know him, gets the impression that her and um, Amy are lesbians. And pedal back to the aisle of Lesbo so I can get my vitamin D. Bullying the gays, someone reeks of the late 90s. And always wanting a lesbian couple friend, he invites them to his party and kind of takes them under his wing. At the party, he proceeds to out them and then nominate them for prom queen. Seeing the potential this has to finally grow the popularity, Carmen convinces a reluctant Amy to continue the lie, which is almost exposed by Lauren when she overhears a conversation. In order to prove the relationship is real, Amy kisses Karma, and this causes her to realize that maybe there are some feelings there for her that she's never felt before. And it's like, Whoa. I know. And all in all, not a bad first episode, I say. The second episode continues with the actual homecoming and the theme is coming out. In the episode, Lauren repeatedly threatens to expose Amy to their conservative parents and kind of blackmails her, but she doesn't in the end. But in order to keep her mother from finding out about her new status as a lesbian, Amy asks Shane to be her fake date to dance. I asked for Butch, not Matthew McConaughey from Magic Mike. This is as Butch as I get. With her mother's first news report assignment being to report on the homecoming's first queens, um, Amy tries to hide this, but in the end of the episode, she comes out to her mom, which is obviously upsetting. With Karma from episode one, we are shown that she has a thing for Shane's best friend, Liam, who she kissed in episode one. They continue their affair with Karma telling him that um, her and Amy have an open relationship and that what they're doing is okay, but that he shouldn't bother catching feelings. I don't want to be the asshole who breaks up Hester's cutest couple. The thing is, Amy and I have an open relationship. But when she realizes that he only wants to sleep with her to fulfill this fantasy, this sick fantasy of sleeping with a lesbian, she decides that maybe she doesn't want to lose her virginity this way, but instead of giving up, she vows to make him fall in love with her before they actually do it. To Amy's disappointment. In the third episode, the students of the school get together to protest a tech company's attempt to buy their private information. And with Liam leading the protest and bonding and getting close to another pretty protester, Carmen gets involved as she's jealous. And the promance continues. Every time we shut the school down, the sexual tension between those two just builds like Mount Vesuvius. Amy tries to find a secret boyfriend to keep her mind off karma and to give her something to do, and decides on a cute lone boy called Oliver. But when she kisses him, she doesn't feel anything and realizes that, you know what, maybe that isn't the solution to her problems right now. Also, during the episode, Shane notices the chemistry slash sexual tension between Liam and Carmen and takes this information to Amy. And this is where she confesses everything to him. And they kind of start a little friendship. We're faking being lesbians. Karma is. I'm not so sure. In episode four, Amy begs Shane to help her find a real girlfriend because she thinks she might genuinely be a lesbian and wants to go back to just having platonic feelings for Karma. So they stop by this lesbian coffee shop and try and find someone for her. They do, and um, they even go on a date, which was going well, until she abruptly kisses the girl and attempts to figure out her sexuality quickly. Her date expresses that she went through the same thing with her best friend, and that though it didn't go well for them, she wishes her luck with her situation, and tells her that, you know what, she's here if, the, if things don't work out. Also, um, in this episode, Carmen is too embarrassed to help her hippie parents um, juice truck business. So Liam decides to help a lending hand, 
which irritates karma. After this leads to an argument with them, they talk things out, make up and end up bonding over issues with their dysfunctional families. This leads karma to feel close enough to Liam to want to have sex with him now, but reverse Uno, he isn't ready. I can't. While at Amy's house, after helping Amy get ready for her date, Shane accidentally walks in on Lauren trying to take sexy pictures. Wrong angle, bad lighting, add filter. Shut the door! Basically, she wants to take sexy enough pictures that when she sends it to her boyfriend, he shares it with the whole school. Later, we'll find out why that validation is very important to Lauren. In the next episode, while sleeping over at Amy's house, the girls are told that they have to help Lauren with the preparations for their mother's bridal shower. When Amy learns that her mom chose Lauren to be her maid of honor over her, she works hard to prove that Lauren's intentions aren't genuine, but in the process, she learns that that's not actually the case and that Amy's mom is actually Lauren's only friend and she doesn't really connect or relate to most people in the town. Also, with Liam deciding that it's just wrong for them to continue their affair, karma proposes a threesome between them and Amy. No, karma, I would not have a f***ing threesome with you and Liam. You were so having a f***ing threesome with Karma and Liam. Though she initially declines, Shane is able to convince her that this is a great opportunity to test if Carmen will reciprocate her feelings. At a threesome, everyone is kind of nervous. Is this a threesome or a staring contest? Let's do this. So Amy takes the lead and kisses Karma. This leads to Liam, this leads Liam to kiss Amy. But this triggers Karma and she just runs away saying that she can't do this. Feeling insecure about the whole situation, Karma tries to convince Amy to publicly break up with her, but Amy reads this as her running away from her feelings. She sounds jealous. Karma is in denial. Yeah. And what gave you the confidence? Um, delusion. <laughs> <laughs> when the breakup is announced publicly, the school blames Liam for this, which gives Lauren the opportunity to find a cause and gain popularity by labeling Liam a heartbreaker and getting all the girls that he's hurt together to kind of like have someone to hate basically. The girls get into a fight with Karma feeling some jealousy and that there might be something between Amy and Liam, but they make up not too long after. I think this is another reason why I feel like I didn't take the show too seriously. Like, take this storyline for example. These girls are four and made up like 10 times at this point. They will fight, they make up like five minutes later. If you're doing it all the time, it loses its significance, it loses importance, it loses any kind of emotion to it because it's like, Okay. What about Amy? She's my best friend. I love her, but we're not a couple anymore. And Karma and Liam finally hook up. In the season finale, due to Amy's speech at her mother's wedding, Karma suspects that maybe she has some feelings for her and confronts her about this. This leads to Amy finally confessing her feelings, but unfortunately, Karma doesn't feel the same way. I love you too, Amy. More than anyone else on earth. Just not like that. Simultaneously, Shane tells um, Liam the truth about the girl's fake relationship and feeling hurt by her lies and kind of betrayed he breaks up with her. At the end of the wedding and the episode with both Amy and Liam feeling upset and want to hurt Karma they drunkenly hook up. <sighs> yeah. Guilt is killing me. Oh this little piggy went boo hoo hoo all the way home. Man up. Season 2 is split into two parts and part 1 begins with the aftermath of the season 1 finale. So after sleeping together, Amy and Liam initially decide to keep what happened between them a secret, but several times over the season the guilt overwhelms him and he wants to come clean, but Amy is always there to threaten him and make sure that he doesn't. At some point she even goes as far as crashing one of his family's events and making a scene to embarrass him in attempts to blackmail and silence him. I love when women step into male dominated fields. <laughs> When him and Karma finally start dating for real though and they generally fall for each other, he does come clean. At first she puts all the blame on him, labelling him a manipulative piece of shit that took advantage of Amy. But when Karma almost goes as far as exposing his family secrets to the whole school. Did you just kill me? It was for your own good. Now you have to stop talking and go to the basement. Amy comes clean that it was a joint effort and they both equally deserve the blame because they, they both did it to try and hurt her. But you can't blame Liam and not me. Either you forgive us both or you hate us both. In regards to Lauren, when her boyfriend at the time finds out that she's intersex, she basically kidnaps him, um, tying him to a chair and dressing him up in bondage attire to, in attempts to get some blackmail material. He promises that he won't tell anyone. I'm not gonna say anything. Yeah, not if I rip out your tongue. Well, why would I tell anyone my girlfriend's a dude? Not a dude. I was born intersex. 
but he reveals this secret to the group of friends and while she's embarrassed by this they kind of reassure her that she has nothing to be embarrassed about and that it's okay i don't think there's anything humiliating about what you told us but clearly you do you gotta work on that if you want to be happy this half of the season follows her on a journey of self-acceptance standing up to her dad who's always pulling beauty pageants out of embarrassment and wanting to affirm her gender Real girls do? and is this how we should be judged by how pretty or girly we are and even being upfront and telling the new love interest about it. And side note, I need to point out that this new love interest, Theo, is played by none other than Keith Powers. But this is way before the glow up and it's just so hilarious to me. It's kind of similar to um, Koji in Awkward because they look so different. But yeah, also during this half of the season, Shane finds himself a boyfriend called Duke who is an aspiring MMA fighter. But they have to keep the relationship a secret because even though he's not ashamed of being gay or anything he wants to go pro and get sponsored which it feels like he won't be able to do um as an out and proud gay wrestler i don't want to lose this but if you can't deal i understand and it also sees amy finally starting to try and get over karma when she meets a dj called reagan at first karma's happy for her but as the relationship grows karma starts to feel left out and during one group dinner things get a little bit awkward with them fighting over who knows her best. I'm surprised you haven't peed on her yet. You act more like a jealous ex than a best friend. At the end of the dinner, Amy reassures Reagan that everything with Karma is in the past. I do this if Karma's gonna be lingering in the background. She won't be, I promise. Look behind you. And that, yes, they're best friends, but she really, really likes Reagan. And Karma kind of has to learn to take a step back so she can let Amy move on and be happy. By the end of the part one finale, it's revealed that Theo was actually an undercover police officer and he arrests Karma's parents for selling weed which they didn't really see as doing anything wrong and Loki, I hear it You guys aren't drug dealers, are you? Technically, yes Your mom and I don't view weed as a drug I mean, to us, it's medicine When confronting Theo, Lauren accidentally outs herself as being intersex to the whole school and I trusted you, I told you I was intersex And to her surprise, they're actually pretty supportive about it so she's able to use this as a platform to run for school president. Thank you all for your support. I can't wait to be your president. Also during this whole ordeal, Karma gets arrested along with her parents. And because she isn't talking to Karma um, at the moment, after finding out about the whole thing with Liam, Amy gets herself arrested as well in hopes of getting Karma to finally talk to her again and forgive her for sleeping with him. To help Karma, Liam persuades his father slash grandfather to pull some strings and get their charges dropped. But in return, he has to give up art and work for the family business, which he despises but agrees to. In the end, Karma is willing to forgive Amy but they need to take things kind of slow. And with Liam, she gets with him physically because of because of what he did for them, again, them out of prison and stuff. But she still has some trust issues there and just wants to keep it as just sex. I love seeing women in male dominated spaces. <laughs> and just before I continue, I just wanted to let you guys know that I have opened up my membership, um, which is another way for you guys to support this channel if you want to. And with my membership, there are like three tiers. So, the first one, there's the chatterbox. Um, it, this gives you access to like loyalty badges and um, emojis and priority replies to comments and then there's the binges which is the second tier you get the same things from the first tier the chatter box but um, you also get members only polls and members only chat rooms where we can talk about like what TV shows we're watching our thoughts and opinions and general um, TV shows and movies that we enjoy and then if you're really about it that's the third tier <laughs> obviously you also get the perks from the previous two tiers but you also get a shout out in every upcoming video as well as early access to my videos and priority suggestions on what I cover in upcoming videos so yeah if you guys want to support my channel that way you can and um, the link is in the description box as well not virgins anymore thanks to this guy trust me so over it so with part two of the season we see karma and her family struggling with financial issues following their arrest and having to rent out their house to the new guy in school called Felix. This new guy Felix is someone that Amy kind of briefly dates after she asks him to prompt to avoid going with Karma and any potential feelings that could arise from that. He's initially more into it than she is but um, towards the end of the season they express having feelings for each other but when he gets really drunk at a party he reveals that he's an alcoholic. Yeah he'll calm down though as soon as I'm safely back in rehab. Back? And that's something that he needs to take time and work through. Him having like some kind of hidden secrets or like he needs to be looked after is something that's kind of hinted at throughout the season but um, yeah we, do, we don't find out until like towards the very end. 
I don't hold the buckle. Karma and Liam begin a friends benefits type situation, but Liam still loves her once her back while she's trying to figure things out and find a way to forgive him and learn to trust him again. Now working at his um, family's company, he meets the gorgeous, let me say that again, gorgeous Chloe Bridges. I mean, this woman is stunning. Um, her character's name is called Zeta, I think, and they kind of develop a friendship which Karma feels threatened by and causes her to end things with him for good um, during a little trip they took to Las Vegas. In fact, you two belong together. I mean, everyone else already thinks so. When she does this, Chloe's character kisses him, but because he's still stuck on Karma, he um, turns her down. That is until he founds out that um, his dad offered Karma money, I think $250,000, to stop seeing him to which she seriously considered for like a week. If you were offered that money to stay away from Amy, you wouldn't have considered it for one second. Clock that tea. Clock it. Clock that tea. Clock it. And like, I get you're mad at her, but not everyone comes from money. And I, I'm very mad at this point. She, um... I've been working every catering gig I could get. And I live in a freaking juice truck. <laughs> yeah, I get it. It's bad. But at the same time, like, money's real. Help my parents get back on their feet. Help pay for college. How could I not consider it for even a second? I don't blame her for thinking about it, to be honest. I know everyone was hating on her in, in the episode. They found out. But I see it. Like, I don't blame her. After learning about what his dad did, Liam moves out and moves in with Shane. Like the age of consent in Texas. It's 17. Where he's pursued by um, Shane's older adult sister having just reached the age of consent. And first of all, DISGUSTING! She even goes as far as getting a job at the school and plays like some reverse psychology on him. I knew all that not wanting you reverse psychology would do the trick. Yeah, and I knew I wasn't crazy. And he eventually succumbs and have sex with her. And this leads to a falling out between him and Shane. Find a new place to stay tonight. This half also sees Amy question her sexuality once again. Like, though she's happy and content with Reagan, she still notes having attraction to guys and feels like maybe she's not a lesbian, but actually bisexual. Um, the opportunity for them to spend the summer together on tour presents itself, and Amy considers it, but ultimately decides against it because she wants to focus on getting into uni, which is something she's actually wanted, wanted for a while, and because she also isn't able to confidently reassure Reagan that she's fully lesbian and not just figuring things out. This is, this is hard for Reagan because she's had some bad experiences with a girl and a situation like this um, before. Charlotte really played with my head. He used me as a test to prove whether or not she was actually a lesbian and guess what the results were. So this like she has some trauma and some scars um, behind this. They decide to break up as they're clearly at different points in their lives though they do really care about each other. We're just in different places Amy. As much as I wish we weren't. Also, this half sees Shane and Duke going strong for a minute, even becoming monogamous and exchanging I love yous. But that is until Shane's insecurity gets in the way and he accidentally reveals that he's the one who leaked um, Duke's gay dating profile and outed him. Obviously, this causes them to break up and it takes a minute, but Shane finally accepts responsibility and admits that he was wrong for that and he goes to apologize. While Duke appreciates his apology, he doesn't forgive him and they stay breaking up for good. I said I accepted your apology. I didn't say I forgive you. When Amy and Lauren suspect both their parents are cheating, they do a little investigation and it turns out that Amy's mom is the one who's cheating, but with her biological father, who is a war photographer and usually barely around. She reconnects with him, um, which Karma doesn't like because she notices how much he hurts Amy when he comes and leaves like that and um, because the mom is still whooped over him she tells him that yeah it's nice to have you around but you shouldn't stay because you're just giving us hope that we don't need to have and as long as you're around she's just gonna keep getting sucked back in yeah after that the mom comes clean and after taking some time to work on the marriage um, Amy's mom and Lauren's dad decide that the best thing for them is a divorce that they, that, that they rushed into the marriage too quickly and Lauren contemplates moving back with her dad my dad to live with my cheating ex-stepmom? Yes. Also with Lauren, after still feeling hurt and betrayed by Theo, she exposes him as a narc to his new school and he's taken off undercover work and starts working at their school again and they start dating um, but they have to keep it a secret because obviously it's an adult dating a uh, student? Hmm, yeah.
there's a, there's a few of those in this in the show anyways yeah they stay together for a while but she eventually breaks up with him as she's sick of keeping secrets and wants to you know share her life and live authentically publicly honestly and all that as much as i love you i, I can't do this anymore either we go public or she goes back to her ex-boyfriend the one that dumped her for being intersex thinking that he's changed but when he turns their night alone into a party to avoid having sex with her she realized that he hasn't and yeah that's dead too you were always begging me for it before. Then you found out the truth about me. Babe. After seeing Amy kiss Felix, Karma agrees to a threesome between her, Shane, and some guy that they're both into. Surprise, surprise, that doesn't happen either. But in general, she begins acting out and going through a little rebellious phase. Why is everyone freaking out? They're just nipples. Everyone's got them. And Amy confronts her about this. She, she expresses to Amy that she's just upset that everyone seems to be moving on to better things and kind of leaving her behind. Still here. Sad, lonely, homeless karma. And I didn't want to be her anymore. They have a really cute moment in the pool where Amy kind of reassures her that she's enough as is. I just don't understand why you're always trying to be someone else when the real you is so fantastic. And she wishes that basically she could appreciate her or see her the way Amy does. And it's just so cute. And they share like a kiss in the moment in front of everyone. In the last episode of the season, Amy spends the next day in a spiral trying to understand what the kiss meant. But it turns out that she was even too drunk to remember. On the other hand, she was a drunk girl at a party and kissing you for attention is kind of what she's known for. When she does remember though, she apologizes and states that it was a mistake. But the kiss obviously reignites feelings for Amy. So she decides to spend the summer apart from her to get some space and clear her head and to really get over these feelings. Why am I the only person fighting for us? This is fighting for us. No, this is running away. This obviously hurts Karma's feelings that she was going to do it without even saying goodbye. And Karma had to track her down and like to stop her. Karma basically begs her to stay, but she's like, babes. I gotta go my own way. With Karma and Liam fully broken up now, Liam and Chloe Bridges decide to spend the summer together looking for his biological father. And Karma and Shane, who really don't get along at this point, learn that they're going to have to spend the summer together as they're both trained to be lifeguards. Also, when the principal, who is also Felix's dad, threatens to shut the school down, the students get together to try and save it, which they successfully do, mainly thanks to Lauren. She talks about how the school is one of a kind and that you shouldn't try and be like other schools, but other schools should try and be like it. This is a school that accepts you, even if you don't accept yourself. It's a good place for like teenagers to be around and to be in. And with this, she decides to stick around instead of moving back home. And yeah, that's, that's a wrap on season two. You're welcome to stay, but please don't be upset if I'm not there for you. Burn! So let's recap season three. So with the summer over, Amy returns, finally feeling like he's over karma, having had a great time on the tour, and even having a fling with one of the band members. Um, when she arrives back in town, she goes straight to find karma to get their friendship back to normal. But she notices that something is a little bit off. I'm a big girl, I can take care of myself. I know. It's all good. Even though Carmen begs to differ and says everything is okay. She knows she's a bit passive aggressive and she's now bestie bestie with her old nemesis Shane as they've been working um, as lifeguards over the summer. I can't believe I once called you gay Hitler. <laughs> I can't believe I once thought you were a narcissist with an inferiority complex. Oh. And this season mainly follows the girls as they struggle to get their friendship back on track. You left me crying in the middle of the street. You weren't going to say goodbye and now you don't even feel bad about me. In the first episode, towards the end, she finally expresses how hurt she was by Amy abandoning her and that things with them are just not okay. Especially with Amy refusing to apologize for leaving and taking care of herself. I'm not gonna apologize for taking care of myself. I know that's right! <laughs> Though they can't really stay mad at each other for long and they're ready to fix their friendship, ne neither of them wants to make the first move. And Shane getting caught in the middle, as he's friends with both of them now, tries to get them to make up while Lauren is actively working against them in um, Amy's ear as she's getting comfortable and like likes the new dynamic of her and Amy being closer. As I mentioned earlier, um, Liam and Zeta went off during the summer to help find his biological father but when they found him unfortunately he was deceased. Loki though it turns out that the person they found wasn't his real dad but before he learns this in attempts to connect with his Jewish side and feel more connected to his dad the one that um, they found that passed away 
and with him and Zeta now dating, she turns her white party into an impromptu bar mitzvah for him to try and be supportive, especially as she overheard a conversation between him and Carmen where she was being supportive and they were bonding. And she recalls that earlier um, when he first brought it up, she wasn't that supportive, so she's trying to make it up to him, but it's merely motivated by jealousy. Jerusalem, so you could meet your family, but nothing I do matters because apparently I'll never get you like Karma. At the white party, the girls are ready to make up after sharing a joke Em in the toilets and Karma requesting their song. But as Amy heads to the dance floor to find Karma, she witnesses um, Zeta kissing Karma. But thanks to Lauren again being in her ear and feeding her negativity, she storms off and takes this as Karma playing some kind of mind game. Mind you, Zeta only kissed Karma because she was feeling insecure about her and Liam's friendship. This also caused her to break up with him, which she doesn't really seem that bothered about and I think that's the last we see of her. More upset about this video than your breakup with Zeta, don't you? What are you talking about? I'm very upset. Thanks to Lauren's meddling and her hyping up Amy, she releases an embarrassing tape of Karma, um, and they have a little back and forth with Karma releasing Amy's journey to the whole school. When they both get attention for bullying, they kind of talk things out, and Amy outwardly questions that if she was really over Karma, why did the kiss between Karma and Zeta bother her so much? Yeah, I'm not 100% over you, and maybe there's a part of me that never will be. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. But they decide to take a break from the friendship. But it's like at this point, like wrap it up, okay? We get it. But also over the summer, Karma started dating a fellow lifeguard called Dylan, who likes her new personality of being chilled and relaxing and just easy breezy. But when he sees her having a strong reaction to her fight with Amy, he kind of cheats on her, which um, Liam and Amy see. But because they are both trying to prove that they don't care about Carmen anymore, debates on not telling her. In the end though, she finds out and she breaks up with him. And a side note, this guy's agent stays working. Like I swear, he was in every teen TV show and I love that for him. Also, Felix returns after his um, stint in rehab and Amy asks him to help her with the project that she's working on, which is for Lauren's um, brand. During this whole project though, she's basically trying to force Lauren into accepting her label and becoming like a spokesperson for the intersex community. And it's like, not cool, man. Not cool. When they talk things out, Lauren makes a valid point of pointing out that Amy is allowed to not choose a label and to not be defined. So why isn't she affording Lauren the same opportunity? And like, yeah, I get it. That's right. Because you're still on your journey and refuse a label, how convenient. Get a day. And with Liam newly single, surprise surprise he has eyes for amy again but when fate intervenes he gives up and starts dating his cute co-worker who turns out to be his rabbi's daughter the fate that's intervening in question is um amy's dad having a heart attack <laughs> but this health scare um allows our two fates to reunite and put everything behind them and with this experience um the parents come clean to karma that they are polly and they're dating a woman called diane polly amorous sweetheart it means we want to date other people. At first, she tries to pretend that she's cool with it, but she isn't. When she, when she tells them that she's uncomfortable with it, they tell her that though they love her and appreciate her, they can't live for her and like this is their choice. And you know what? I hear it. Live your life. Live your truth. We appreciate that you're living your truth, but we have to live ours as well. During Halloween, um, Felix sees Amy kissing someone and gets jealous, which leads to them having a heart-to-heart that even though um, he's jealous, he has no right to be as he knows that he's not ready for a relationship and he needs like time and space to figure out himself before he can date. And that she, sh she shouldn't feel obligated to wait for him because that's just too much pressure. But until then, I release you. And I think that's kind of cute and mature of them. I love that for them. And also in this episode, even though Liam and Amy are both ready to get back together, after talking to Felix, Karma decides that she too isn't ready for a relationship, that she needs to grow and work on herself first, and that they should try being friends in the meantime, and hopefully they can work out in the future somewhere further down the line. I'm just kidding. I hope you strike out. Speaking of Liam, um, after breaking up with Zita, he moves back in with Shane, but Shane keeps having like visions and thoughts of Liam f***ing his mom. 
So, he, so Liam agrees to move out to remove the possibility and to regain Shane's trust, especially after he slept with his sister. He moves in with Lauren, who is now living alone in a condo that her dad got for her um, after the divorce. They kind of develop a cute friendship and even start dating, which initially was just to put on a brave face to Theo, who's Lauren's ex. But when she realizes that them being a couple helps her popularity and her brand growth, she convinces Liam to keep it going for a while. The final storyline revolves around um, the return of one of their old friends from camp. She's always been kind of jealous of Amy and Karma's friendship and she seems to want to have Amy for herself and trying to push um, Karma out. So when she discovers about Amy's sexuality, she pretends to be questioning to get closer to her. But when Amy gives a speech in front of the whole school basically saying fuck you and your labels. It's just so bad. You're my new idol. Sorry, Ronda Rousey. Sabrina, the friend, gets a twinkle in the eye and they kiss. This is seen by both Carmen and Felix. Felix was there because he wanted to show Amy a romantic gesture and keep the flame between them burning. Persuaded by Karma as she believes that Sabrina was faking it and doesn't want um, Amy to get hurt. After the kiss, Amy and Sabrina kind of start dating and develop real feelings for each other. But that is until Sabrina's boyfriend shows up and Amy dumps her for believing her to be a liar. Get out. You have to let me explain. No, I don't want to listen to your lies and I never want to see you again. At this point, Sabrina's feelings were genuine, I think. And she even tried to like come clean about um, the start just so they can be like totally open and honest with each other. Amy is obviously hurt by this and tries to cover it up by turning her focus and attention to Felix. But Sabrina comes back as she can't get Amy out of her head. I can't eat. I can't sleep. All I can do is think about her she dumps a boyfriend and she knows that she's in love with amy now even though carmen hates her she helps them get back together again believing in their connection sabrina confesses her love to amy in front of everyone in school and they share a kiss it's all cute until you remember that she was supposed to be there on the date with felix it's not too bad for him though because he's been low-key growing an attraction to karma and at the end of the dance he kisses her and she returns um his affection kissing him back showing us that this is you know this could be something you have me beat i mean a girl like you dating liam booker at the same dance lauren and liam share a kiss to kind of prove their um relationship is real which is kind of like a full circle moment from the first episode when amy had to kiss karma but after the kiss they both feel something so this could be the start of something new and loki i'm here for it i would like to see it lastly shane has been dating a transgender student but he keeps fucking up um, and saying the wrong things which makes the relationship rocky as well as like doing some questionable stuff like spying on him this causes him he's called noah to break up with shane my idea is that someone was gonna take away my gay card i'm a gay man shane but at the dance when noah's homophobic transphobic brother shows up shane strongly defends him and they reconcile and noah agrees to try and be more patient with him what if i say something dumb or insensitive again and shane promises to basically try to be better you're shane harvey that's pretty much a guarantee but yeah that is kind of a full recap of the show faking it Obviously, this didn't really feel like a series finale because it wasn't intended to. The show got cancelled before they could wrap things up. But low key, not mad at this ending. I like um, the introduction of Sabrina, and I think her and Amy's relationship seemed cute and promising. And it's like, finally. Because I feel like this relationship is kind of safe from her feelings for Karma at this point. I was left rooting for the final couples Liam and Lauren. Low key, here for it. Cause I'm fully done with like Liam and Karma at this point. Like, will they? Won't they? Okay, it's fine. Let's don't let them. It's okay. And then Shane and Noah also seems to have great potential. Cause at this point, we've seen him grow and learn from his previous relationships, and he's learned to be more respectful of his partner. So yeah. And I think Felix and Karma would make a cute couple actually. So yeah. All in all, not terrible. Reckless and a bad influence on each other. You have left me no choice. My predictions for season four would have been, um, we've seen Shane and Noah relationship last for a decent amount of time. We would have seen a little love triangle or love square. <laughs> One between Amy, Sabrina and Karma, but not necessarily like a love triangle, more like a struggle of, she's my best friend, but she's my girlfriend. So we need to find a way to both share her. And in terms of Square, I think we've just seen something here yeah, between Karma, Felix, Liam and Lauren. I think Liam would have been jealous of what Karma's got going on. 
and Karma have been jealous of Liam and Lauren and them trying to like navigate this new dynamic. And I think maybe Amy would feel a type of way about Karma and Felix and her whole still questioning her sexuality will still come back in play because she tells us this every season. No hate though. Um, yeah, I think that's all that happened for season four. But all in all, like I said, I enjoyed this ending. Yeah, not too shabby. But yeah, that has been the recap of the MTV show Faking It. Um, I'm surprised but not surprised at the same time that so many people wanted me to recap this video. Um, even though I like, I knew I wasn't the only one who watched it, I didn't think it was as popular as it was. Like, yeah, if no one talked about Awkward, like, why would people talk about Faking It? Because, um, again, like I said, it's nowhere near as good. To me, it's okay that it's one of those shows that came and left. Yeah, I know it's not like I, I don't fuck with it. I did enjoy it. It was fun to watch, but yeah, it just wasn't anything special. But it was fun recapping it and going down memory lane. But yeah, that has been my recap. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, don't forget to share, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to leave your comments and your thoughts um, on the show, on the video. And I hope you guys have a great day, great month, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.